Okay, so I thought we'd take a look at one of these questions from start to finish. Someone hands us a polynomial and wants us to find the roots. Let's see how we go. I'll make this one a cubic. So let's consider f of x equals x cubed plus 3x squared minus 6x minus 8. Okay, so there is the polynomial, and I want to find all the zeros, which of course means I want to set that equal to 0 and solve for x. Well, it's a cubic, so I don't know how to factor that directly. So one technique to try after thinking about factoring techniques that would all basically fail, as far as I could tell, is to see if I can find a rational root. So let's look for candidates of rational roots. Now where do you, where do you look? Well, I use the rational zero theorem. And the rational zero theorem says that if you're going to have rational zeros, their numerators will be factors of minus 8, and the denominators, in this case, will be factors of plus or minus 1. So the candidates would be what? Well, you factor, look at all the factors at the bottom of, of, the, of the minus 8, which would be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, and plus or minus 8. And now look at all the factors of 1. That's pretty easy, actually, plus or minus 1. So now I look at all the quotients. And if you think about it, any of these numbers divided by plus or minus 1 is still just these numbers. So in fact, in this case, since this was just a 1 in front, all the candidates are right in front of you. So in fact, there are only eight candidates. If this is going to have a rational root, and it may not have one, by the way. It may not have one. But if it does, it's going to be one of these eight numbers. So let's just try and error and see what happens. If I plug in a 1 in, let's look at f of 1. Is that 0? If I put in a 1, I see uh, 1 plus 3 is 4. And then 4, and then here I'm going to have a minus 6 minus 8. And minus 6 minus 8 plus 4 is certainly not 0. It's negative. So in fact, this is not 0. What about the next one? How about f of minus 1? If I put a minus 1 in here, that's a minus 1 here. This becomes a plus 3. So minus 1 plus 3 is plus 2. Plus 2, and I put a minus sign here, becomes a plus 6. So plus 2 plus 6 is actually uh, 8 minus 8 is 0. So that looks pretty good. Did I do that correctly, by the way? Let's see. This is going to be an, a 6. And then I'm going to have a, yeah, I'm going to have a plus 2, which is 8. So this is 0. Wow. I found one. Sort of surprising. Didn't expect that. OK, so there's a root right there. Boom, I've got one. So what could I do now? Well, I could keep going on my list and see if there's others. Or I could just now say, if minus 1 is actually a 0, that means that x plus 1 is a factor. And then I can actually use the division algorithm, or I could use the uh, synthetic division method to actually see what's left over. So either one's fine. Let's keep going on our list, though, and see if we can maybe detect some other ones. So let's look at 2. If I plug in 2, I see 8. And this is going to be, let's see, this is going to be 4 and 12. So we have an 8 and a 12. And then I subtract a, a what? I subtract a 12, so these cancel out. And then I see an 8, and I see an 8. So again, I see 0. Wow, I'm seeing all the factors here. And what about, and what about a negative 2? Well, you could try negative 2 and stuff, but I've already found two roots. That seems like an awful lot to me. So let's see what happens when we actually start to get these roots out and see what's left over. So I'll use this one right here. I see that 2 is a 0. If 2 is a 0, what that means is that x minus 2 must be a factor. So if that's a factor, what that means is I should be able to synthetic divide this into that and see what's left. So I switch the sign, so I get now a 2. I make a little house. Put down the coefficients, 1, 3, minus 6, minus 8. The remainder should be 0 if this is correct, because otherwise it's not going to divide unevenly. I bring down the 1, I get 1. Multiply it by 2, I get 2. Add, get 5. I combine these guys. If I combine these guys, I get 10. If I combine these things, I get 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 minus 8 is 0. Cool. So that's a good check. This is 0. And what's left over? What's left over here is an x squared, because I have an x cubed, and I'm taking out an x. So this is the x squared, this is the x, and this is the constant. So what I see here is that f of x 
can be factored as x minus 2 times x squared plus 5x plus 4. And now the question is, can I factor this? Well, let's see if I can factor this in some way. Well, yeah, I think I actually can factor that. x plus 4 and x plus 1. So I want to find the zeros of this. I set it equal to 0, and now I can read it off since it's factored. I see x equals 2. That was the one we already saw. I see x equals minus 4, and I see x equals minus 1. And notice the x equals minus 1 was also the one we already found. So in fact, we found two of them. The one we didn't find was the x equals minus 4. But notice something. If we would have kept going on my list, I would have come across minus 4, and I would have uncovered that one too. So there are a lot of different ways of finding the roots, especially if a root is rational. You can really uncover it in this finite list. Check, use synthetic division, see what's left over, factor, and find the zeros. Try these on your own now.